Hey, it's John and Mike, RudeAshDudes.com, and uh, in between the Jar of Destiny uh, series, we also started the series of viewer submitted recipes, and here's another one. This is coming from a guy named Mark, and he writes, Hi, dudes! So this is a beer that I have some good reviews with. I like Citra, but not at the alcohol level it normally seems to appear in, in terms of beers, I guess. So I wanted to make a session type ale and I looked to make a blonde using only Citra. To be fair, it's slightly hoppy for the style, uh, that style being 18A, the blonde ale, according to the recipe builders, but as it, uh, it has mostly late hops, this doesn't necessarily translate in terms of IBUs, that's for sure. And after all, it's all about the flavor and he has a, a U in the flavor, so he is not of America. He's just fancy. Yeah. Which he's is just fun. fancy. No, he's fancy. But no, I think, I'm not sure where he's from, but it's, it's definitely outside of America. Uh, another hot tip is that everything was in metric. So, here we go. Yes. <laughs> Which is okay, because I had to follow the recipe uh, right down the line, and I had to do the conversions. And here we go. So, the batch size was uh, 23 liters or 6 gallons. The boil size was 26.85 liters or around 7 gallons. Uh, I'm going to skip one section and we'll talk about it, uh, but we'll talk grains right now. So, 88.2% uh, of the grain bill was floor malted Maris Otter malt. That came in at, uh, for my batch size, 3.35 kilograms or 7.4 pounds. Then we had 5.3% of torrified wheat. Yes, I love torrified wheat. There you go. Wheat. That's uh, 200 grams or 7 ounces. Uh, and then 4% uh, four, 4 of acidulated malt. Yes. So 150 grams of that, 5.3 ounces. And then 2.6% uh, 2. Uh, 2. of cara foam. Uh, that's 100 grams, 3.5 ounces. Hops, as we said, all citra and all within the brew day. So yes. at 10 minutes to go in the boil, we added 20 grams of citra hops. He has it at 12.5 uh, alpha acids. I think I was in the 12.9 range for all of mine. Then at uh, five minutes to go in the boil, he had another 20 grams of hops. And then we did a 20 minute hop stand at 80 degrees Celsius, 176 degrees Fahrenheit, 60 grams of citra hops. So 100 grams in total. Yeast was one packet of Ferme Fermentus Safe Ale US05, American Ale Dry Yeast. The instructions were as follows. We mashed for an hour at 67 degrees Celsius, 152 degrees Fahrenheit. There was not there was a note in his recipe and I highlighted it here. He had uh, fermenting at 35 degrees Celsius and I was like, that's a little too hot for my take. I brought that down to 22 degrees Celsius, 72 degrees Fahrenheit for seven days. Then we cold crashed for uh, three days. He has it for two, two degrees Celsius. I just threw it in my fridge. We did that for three days and then we uh, transferred and kegged. Uh, pretty low gravity on this. Uh, he had his target at uh, 1039. I had 1042 when I measured at the end. Final gravity, 1008. I was able to hit that with this beer. Okay, let's talk about what you're sensing. Oh, on this, this. Um, I on get this on the nose, I get like a candied lemon peel. So not like a tart lemon peel, I get like a candied lemon peel. I get a little bit of like candied lemon flavor, but I definitely get like almost an apricot note, mm. uh, which is blending nice. I'm always blown away at how um, wide a range you can get with citra, depending on lot and whatever. I mean, as homebrewers, we have no control over this, but mm. um, citra seems to have sometimes be able to give you a pretty wide variety of flavors. So I'm really digging that. I almost get a little bit of like a, a juicy white grape thing in there too on the aroma, but it's mostly like a candied lemon and um and the other thing i said so the candied lemon and the oh the a little bit of apricot yeah 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 and i think the flavor follows so too yeah uh as far as the hop flavor goes i have some comments about the grain bill but um the um, the hop flavor is subtly citrus it's bright it's uh it's super enjoyable yeah really well balanced it's not overly aggressive in any one direction it's just citrus so um but again i get a little bit more of that 
candied lemon, maybe even a little bit of like tangerine or something. Yep. Uh, maybe a little bit of a, maybe tying the aroma and the flavor together. Sometimes USO5 will throw a little peach note. So mm. I think that's also tying it all together. I think it's a wonderful matchup there. If, if, if indeed there is some peach coming off the, oh, the USO5. Um, but otherwise, it's great. Um, Malt-wise, body-wise, it drinks really light. Drinks super easy, super clean. Um, I love the, there's a smoothness to it. So it's just Maris Otter, wheat, some Carafoam, and I know some acidulated malt to yep. probably for the mash issues. But um, I do love the flavor profile. It is very light. I mean, it's uh, on the body and yep. the finish, everything. It's <clears> very light. And there's just enough hopping here. I think there's just enough hopping here. And I'm not getting, I'm getting just maybe a touch, 10% of what I would normally expect to get of like that uh, raw, maybe pithy, right. just yep. general yeah. hot pellet character, yeah. um, which is totally fine. It's actually helping with the balance of the beer overall in this case. Um, so I only point that out from a standpoint of, uh, you noted that was all um, in the, on the brew days when the hops were yeah. all, and I love doing that. I think you can get excellent hoppy, expressive beers without trying to go super crazy with the dry hopping later on and stuff. So, totally. And as a home brewer, you, then you can really limit the amount of oxygen exposure in a beer like this. So I love exactly. it. Exactly. Love it. That's love what it. we did. That's what we did. Now, the one aspect of this beer I left out was the water. Yep. And he asked uh, in his recipe, he was going with reverse osmosis water. And then uh, a note he had in the recipe was uh, light and hoppy. So I'm guessing that he followed some uh, brew calculator yep. to get to that water profile. So yep. I can tell you what I added in and I can tell you what his uh, measured results of uh, different uh, sure. uh, uh, salts or, 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 or uh, what, well, what do you want to call it, uh, elements in, in the water. <laughs> so uh, he had uh, one gram of baking soda, uh, 2.6 grams of calcium chloride, 1.4 grams of Epsom salts and six grams of gypsum. Uh, to bring us to uh, 75 ppm of calcium, 5 ppm of magnesium. I'm guessing that's coming from the uh, Epsom salt. Yep, yep. Uh, 18 uh, ppm of sodium, 48 ppm of chloride, and 137 ppm of sulfate. His sulfate to chloride ratio is 2.9. Yeah. So, certainly, like, I was going to get your take. Well, first of all, I was going to be like, so can you taste all the uh, water chemistry in here or not? Um, yeah, set the hair so I can yeah, look at take it. a look at it. Right there. Um, so I think there's definitely, uh, coming from RO water, it's definitely um, the mineral profile is probably helping this beer out quite a bit. I don't think it tastes at all minerally. I don't, I don't no, really taste the no, mineral no. quality to it. Um, I know that when you, you can select in water profiles to help build like light hoppy. I wouldn't really call this a hoppy beer. I mean, that's going to sound weird, but let me explain. It's a hop forward beer. Yeah. But I think light and hoppy from a concept, right? Hoppy in a water profile from concept is focusing on bitterness, right? It's focusing on that kind of hop expression. You can, because think about New England IPA, it's very chloride forward beer, yep. Yep. softening the malt bill, but it has a tremendous amount of hop aroma. Sure. So, I think, and I haven't experimented with this a lot, and I haven't really seen it written much, but your water profile and hop aroma are two totally different things. How the hops come across on the palate, though, from a crispness, stamp, crispness standpoint, um, and how, the, how chloride affects the malt bill, really, I think is, is a big deal. So in this example, he's weighted pretty good. Uh, he's at 137 sulfate to 18... Um, uh, I'm sorry, 48 chloride. So that's like uh, three, almost a three to one ratio. Oh, look at that. I'm doing the math in my head and it says 2.9 right, right, right there. there. Boom. Yeah. See? <laughs> so um, too many numbers today. Um, <laughs> so yeah, so that's, that's what's going on there. What's really interesting to me too is the use of acidulated malt in the grain bill and some baking soda in the, the cause those two things are working against each other, hmm. right? So it's, um, I don't know what the strategy was there. Um, you know, if I wanted to get a little sodium in the water, and I think that's a good idea to have some sodium in the water. Um, I think that, I mean, this is 18 ppm sodium. Uh, think about sodium chloride when you, you know, it's table salt when you salt stuff. So a little bit of sodium on your palate, I think, helps with flavors. Um, so 
instead of baking soda, you could just use table salt to get some sodium in there mm -hmm. and maybe not be fighting so much the acidity. Because this is 4% acidulated malt, which isn't a lot, but it's a little bit more than I would think I would normally see yeah. in a recipe. Yeah. Um, you could probably get away with less than that if there wasn't the baking soda in there. It's only one gram of baking soda, but whatever. Uh, I love grams. That's the, the only way to measure brewing salt <laughs> yeah. is grams. Forget quarter teaspoons and stuff yeah. like that. Um, that's why I didn't I didn't translate that. Yeah, yeah, no, you should always do those things. <laughs> I did that. I, that's how I measured it. Um, anyway. But that being said, that's just my take looking at it. If I was to look at this in advance of, before I was tasting the beer, I'd be like, well, that's a little bit weird. But it, who cares? In the end result, it's all is about this the flavor. Beer, yes, in the end result, what said. what's working, I wouldn't change this recipe at all. Yeah. I wouldn't change it at all. Yeah. Um, if I was going to play with it, I would love to see what it would taste like a little bit mashed, a little higher. Yeah. Especially being such a low OG, right? Mm. Uh, I tend to maybe push myself up to, you know, a 1055-ish or, you know, for, for a lower uh, OG like this, just because you want to make sure there's a little bit of something left there where you'd normally be getting it just from a residual, a lack of attenuation, right? Yeah. So this attenuated really well and it tastes just as good, so. I think for a sessionable beer, it, it hits the spot. Oh, he had uh, the, the, sorry. Didn't it say drinks it. like a... New England Blonde Ale, yeah, right? I mean, it is. Yeah, I yeah, think that's a yeah. beautiful thing. Uh, the name of this was Citron. It's a combo of blonde nice. and citra. I was trying to like pronounce it. I was going to write it at the top. I love it. But oh, I really did. Great. Yeah, it's really great. Um, well, thanks for that. I wanted to see what your thoughts were on all the uh, the, the, mineral, the mineral additions. Um, oh, the other thing that he, he did that I didn't because just my setup is different. This was all brew in a bag. That's yep. his way of doing it. Um, I did my usual in a cooler batch bar, yeah, yeah, that yeah. sort of thing. But uh, my pre-boil, my, my pre-boil uh, uh, gravity was exactly the same as his. He had 1036, and I yeah. hit that when I got the boil started. Anyway, uh, thanks so much. We enjoy brewing your recipes. We had uh, a call for recipes, I think, late last year, and. We have a bunch uh, that we're going through randomly and, and brewing up when we have time, when we're not brewing our own beers for uh, other projects like the Jar of Destiny. Jar of Destiny. So um, if you have a uh, recipe that you'd like to send in, please do. We are dudes at brew-dudes.com and uh, please send it via email because at least then I can put it into uh, the old uh, spreadsheet of randomness, and then we can uh, select it uh, for the next brew, whenever that is. Hopefully we can get a few more done this year. So, thanks so much, thanks for watching. If you dig this video, give us a thumbs up, subscribe to our channel because we do this kind of thing every single week. For John and Mike, brew-dudes.com, brew on. Cheers.